What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today we're gonna to be talking about one of my personal favorite guns and whether or not it's actually right for you. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the MP5 or the SP5 or even the SP5K. Basically, the MP5 in its civilian clothing, the one that you're able to buy. Is this right for you? Is this a good gun for you to own for home defense, self-defense? Is this right for you for fun? Today, we're gonna to go through that. Before we do that, I should mention a quick history and track record of the SP5 or the MP5 so you know what it is. Well, the SP5 is a roller delayed 9 inch pistol caliber carbine and it has a track record that really is second to none, especially in the sub-gun world. Really, in the world of firearms in general. They've been around since the 60s, they've been used by the SAS, Delta Force, Navy SEALs, anybody that you can think of that's ever used a firearm for serious use. The LA SWAT teams, many SWAT teams around the world, police to this day still use the MP5, and that's because of its legendary reliability and durability, simplicity of use, modularity, and a lot of other things that we're gonna get to in a second. If you're interested in a gun that has a good track record, you can't do much better than this. Now, I did want to mention before we continue with this that this is this month's giveaway gun for us. We've once again partnered with Get Under to Win to give you guys a really cool gun, and I couldn't think of a better gun than this. If you're interested in getting this, all you have to do is go to the link in the description, pick up a limited edition collectible by tonight at midnight, and you are automatically entered to win an SP5. And the first thing I want to talk about is the philosophy of use. What would you want this for? Because you don't really care about the specs, you don't really care about the track record and history if it's not the right for you in the first place. So do you want a pistol caliber carbine? Well, first off, this is one of the best pistol caliber carbines, but pistol caliber carbines are not always right for you. This fires the nine millimeter cartridge. It comes with any type of magazines that you want. Threaded barrel, it has lights and laser mounts for accessories. If you want to change out the uh, rail, you can. And I think it makes a phenomenal home defense weapon personally. If you're looking for a home defense weapon and you want something premium, this is a really good way to go. It's lightweight, it's easy to shoot, and it's good for smaller statured people because it is smaller and lighter than your average AR-15, which is really nice. It also has more than enough capability for a home defense role. A lot of people dismiss the subgun or the PCC because it is ballistically inferior to a rifle, but honestly, 30 rounds in the right spot is 30 rounds in the right spot. And there's a lot of situations where you might want something like this instead of a full caliber rifle cartridge in the first place. Let's say you live in an apartment, for example, on the 10th floor in the middle of a city. Well, maybe shooting 7.62 by 54 through 19 walls and hitting the neighbor's cat four doors down isn't the right thing for you. Maybe you want to use some hollow points and then maybe with a type of gun like this, you're going to experience a lot less over penetration. You're also going to get a lot less noise and you're also going to get uh, the ability to suppress this and use subsonic to where it's basically movie quiet if you so desire. If you have kids in the house, if you have kids in your apartment and you're worried about hearing damage, this is a really good way to go. If you have a smaller statured wife, 5'2", something like that, like my wife, for example, she absolutely loves this gun, and that's one of the main reasons why we're actually doing this video, because she does prefer this firearm over a lot of larger guns, like a SCAR, for example, or maybe a very heavy AR-15, because it's lightweight, it's short, it's small, it's easy to operate, it's stupid reliable, and overall, it's super fun to train with, and I think that's probably gonna be one of the biggest things about the MP5 over even other things in its competitive uh, arena that it's very, very low recoil, even for a nine millimeter PCC. You can get off shots super easy. The magazines are really easy to uh, load, which is nice. The magazines are reliable, and the gun is not only easy to use, but super fun as well. Everybody loves a good HK slap. You're right, everyone does love that. They do love it. Hey, you were t <laughs> My wife was talking crap about it before she shot it, but now she can't stop slapping the damn thing. I like the nine inch version of the SP5, and I like the subgun version as well. I actually have them both. I have the K and I have this. K is just short for Kurtz, which means short. This version, however, is the most uh, used version throughout the history of law enforcement and military because it has a little bit less recoil and pulse. It has a longer length of pull. So even though it's a really short gun, it's long enough for even me to be, get my big goon hands on and run really well. And on top of that, you get the full nine inch barrel instead of the five. And what that gives you is more rail space on the end. So you're, you actually have space to put grips and lights and stuff like that, which is really important 
when you want to have a home defense gun, you want to identify your target. And I think it's just easier to put stuff on the nine inch uh, version, but mostly if you know anything about nine millimeter ballistics, it's about, it's debatable depending on ammo type, but nine through 11 inches is really what you want. <laughs> Hard not to say that without laughing. <laughs> that's what everybody wants, right? But that's the best know. barrel length <laughs> for uh, that's the best barrel length for nine millimeter velocity. And after you get to about the 10, 11 inch point, you drop off because you actually burnt all the spent powder inside the barrel, and now you getting diminished returns for an increased length and uh, decreased mobility. So you get the most mobility for velocity with the MP5. They really knew what they were doing back in the 1960s when they developed this. Now another great thing about this is it's easily changeable to a bunch of different configurations that essentially changes the philosophy of use of the gun. If you want that cool surefire fore end that you see in the movie SWAT and was all throughout the 90s, you could push a simple push pin and take this entire rail system off and just put that on if you want. And this light and this grip and everything that's on this M lock rail goes right with it and you can put that over in the side and you can put a different rail system on it. You can put a different uh, stock system on it, brace system on it, you can get even crazy and instead of just putting triggers in it which you can do you can also just push these two push pins here you could take the entire lower assembly off which is not the serialized part by the way and you could pick up different lowers for different trigger types if you want to go real fast or if you just want to have a better trigger so I like that a lot but really I think the selling point behind the gun is going to be the reliability and the use in pop culture. So first off, what do you want in a gun? You want a reliable, durable gun that's effective and it's easy to use and it's fun, right? But you also want one that's cool because you can actually get a lot of those guns that are very reliable. Like this one's stupid reliable. If you want to shoot suppressed, you want to shoot unsuppressed, it's gonna work. That's what MP5s are known for and it's gonna have low recoil, but the real cool factor is that it's cool in general. It's in every single movie that you've ever seen. Honestly, for me, I grew up in the 90s watching action movies. I didn't have a Disney childhood. I was watching Jean-Claude Van Damme movies when I was like six years old, so I'm familiar with the MP5. And the MP5 has been used by every slicked up cool guy with tactical gear in the history of movies. And part of that is because of its lineage and its success. Part of that is because the SAS repelled through a freaking window with it. But a lot of it is just how it looks and who's used it in movie history and a lot of that is important when I choose my firearms because there's so many firearms in the industry there's so many firearms that can do similar things that you really need to consider not just what is good like the old days the 80s 90s 2000s you had a very limited choice in reliability in accuracy in ease of use and simplicity but now there's so many guns available uh, in each price point, you can kind of pick which one you think looks cool and it's still probably gonna work for you. And personally, that's why I err toward the MP5. I like the controls, I think it's cool. 30 rounds in the gun that always is gonna work. It's light, it's simple, it's easy to use, but mostly, it looks fucking cool. Now there are some competitive options. The MP5 certainly isn't the only game in town and we've shown you a few on the channel throughout the history of the channel. One of those is gonna be the Chris Vector. The Chris Vector is a great gun. We actually gave one of those away last month and uh, the guy was pretty happy with that. Now. That is a good option, although I would consider the MP5 more reliable and even less recoil, but looks factor is what it is, and I like them both, so get whichever one you want. There's also gonna be the CZ Scorpion that comes out at about a $1,000 price point, which is a great gun, and it's as reliable as the MP5, maybe even a little bit lighter, but it does have a blowback operated system, and it's not near as fun to pew pew as the MP5 is, and you're not gonna be going near as fast either. Now, the BNT APC9 is kind of the remade MP5 by BNT, and I do love like that gun, but I don't love it because it does all the same things my MP5 does. It just doesn't look as cool. But the BNT APC9 is very cool in its own right, and I do own one, so there is that. Uh, there's a lot of options that can do the same thing, but none of them have the track record, the cool factor, and the looks of the MP5, which is why I often still consider it the gold standard. You add that to the fact that it's been doing this same thing since 1960, and you have 60 freaking years of history of excellence with this gun, it really makes me sleep all warm and fuzzy at night knowing I have one of these. Now, it's not all sunshine and rainbow, 
Rainbows, there is some cons to the MP5. It's going to be a little slower to reload than an AR-15, but the upside of that is you do get that HK slap, which we talked about in the beginning. And if you do use the modularity of the gun and you put an even larger charging handle on it, you're going to have an even easier time. The biggest con I would consider with the MP5 is that it isn't a full rifle caliber, so you're not going to get the uh, terminal ballistics that you're going to get out of, let's say, a 5.56 close range or a 7.62, but nine millimeters is extremely effective, and I haven't seen a lot of videos of civilian use of, of SMGs that didn't work out in their favor. You know, people are like, well, the reload's slow, but what are the chances you're gonna be doing a reload in an apartment conflict? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what are you up to that you need to fire more than 30 rounds in your house to get your intruders out? Unless you're Pablo Escobar, I think this is gonna work just fine. The last con I wanted to talk about is gonna be the price, cause it's all gravy until you go there to pick one up. You're super excited, you watch an Honest Outlaw video, you wanna get your SP5, you go to the store, you find out it's $3,000. <laughs> Which makes me laugh a little even saying it because it is an older gun. And if you look at guns like the AR-15, for example, which were relatively expensive when they came out and have reduced so much in cost after the patents have expired, that you can get a pretty good one like an IWI for about 700 bucks. Sadly, the SP-5 is not quite there yet. And most of the variants, even the clones, are still around $2,000. You can get a Sentry Arms for a lot cheaper, but it's a Sentry Arms. And I think there are great versions of it. The Zenith comes to mind, but it doesn't have that cool HK on the side. Now, the other way you can get around spending the $3,000 is you can enter the giveaway. And as I mentioned before, all you have to do is go to the link in the description below, pick up a limited edition collectible by tonight, January 19th, 2024 at 11.59 p.m. And you can be automatically entered to win this and you can avoid trying to explain to your wife why you just spent $3,000 on a PCC from Call of Duty. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please sub out your Oklahoma shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.